You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. And today I have uh, a friend, a longtime friend from the Brockton Police Department who's here, Michelle. Michelle Thibault. Good to see you. Nice to see you too, Mark. Um, you handle all the grants for I the do. Brockton Police Department, and I just heard you're doing double duty. You're in the yes, chief's right. office as well. Correct. The grants is a big job. I mean, everything's about grants these days. Yeah. Um, you know, local governments can't exist with just the tax funded stuff. I mean, we have a great police department. Uh, mayor's expanded it. It's been diversified, uh, new leadership. That's correct. But it takes money to pay for all this stuff. Correct. Okay. And it's not always there because of circumstances. Brockton is a poorer city. It's a great city, but it's a, you know, we don't have Newton property values. That's correct. Correct? Okay. So you are, um, you, you have a long time grant, a, a, a jail arrest diversion program, mm -hmm. which comes from the Mass, De Public, Mass Department of Public Health. Correct. So I'm assuming that's the reason you're here. That's right. That's correct. Okay. I'm bugging you guys so I can get a little bit of a community forum in. Okay. Um, the reason for it being is because this year for the first time, this particular funder wants, a, wants us to have a forum. And uh, given the timelines, meaning, you know, there's, you have to do these things in very quick timelines, I didn't have a lot of time to actually ha have an open forum with the public. So I'm bothering you guys to have it here now. Um, and I will give my information at the end, so if people have comments or thoughts, they can email me mm -hmm. or call me, and I'd be glad to take down the information and pass it along to the state. Um, so, yes, that's why I'm here. So, the police department wants the public's involvement. That's correct. I know that I was involved years ago and something that's coming back, which we're going to get someone on to promote, hopefully, about the, um, the Citizens Police Academy. Oh, correct. Right. I did that. Yes. I went on the ride along. I was there. I, I never thought I was going to fire a gun in my life, and I learned how to fire a, a, a Glock 9mm. Correct. Yep. Went over to that firing range yep. uh, where you, you hear gunshots at Massasoit, and the reason you hear gunshots at Massasoit is because you can hear them because they're over in the field. That's right. But um, So I, I think I just blew it. I, I gave away the name of the grant. That's okay. But it, it's funded through the Department of Mental Health? That's correct. And okay. it's, we've had it since fiscal year um, 2011, and they are multi-year uh, grant sources. Uh, the, the funding source that I'm applying for now will run for three years. Mm -hmm. um, it's really a strategic grant that, that um, allows police departments to follow what's called a national model of crisis intervention team training where police officers receive 40 hours worth of um, specialized training on mental health awareness, behavior health, how to intervene, de-escalation skills, uh, what medications look like, so forth and so on. So when they go to a scene, they can already, they already have, they're prepared, they have their toolbox, if, you know, so to speak, uh, ready to uh, help define the situation a little bit better. And the goal of the grant is to divert, when possible, people with a mental illness from arrest. As you know, uh, Mark, and many people do in the community, um, we're, we, uh, arresting is not gonna help this, these, these individuals. Getting them assistance, getting them help is the way to go. And that's proving itself nationally. Mm -hmm. So Brockton is just, we're on, that, we're on that bandwagon. We're trying to do the very same thing. That's great um, because when people go out, I mean, police officers, they're not just law enforcement people. They're social workers. They're <laughs> they guidance don't like admitting counselors. That, but, yes. but they do everything. And so, so, do, so do firefighters, too. Correct. When you go out on a rescue, I mean, the firefighters are also treating people that, you know, opiate overdoses. Of course. You know, the mayor, when he came in here, I mean, the first thing I ever heard was about nasal Narcan. Yeah. And believe it or not, I'm glad I heard about it because my father took my mother's pain milk pills and ended up having to be revived wow. at 88 years old. Wow. And didn't do any damage. That was in Easton with the Easton Fire Department. So, I mean, I always got brought up, my dad was in law enforcement for 36 years. I got brought up that police officers are your friends, right. okay? They're not your enemy. They're not here to hurt you unless you did something wrong to hurt somebody else, right. okay? Right. But people with mental illness, it's they no don't necessarily know the no. difference and it is no fault of their own. Correct. So what type of strategies um, can you talk to me about and explain and, and, and why you or a committee choose these strategies? Well, um, Part of it is because the funder requires it. One mm -hmm. is that 40-hour CIT training that I just talked about okay. um, for police. The other piece of it is called a co-responder model, which is where we take 
a very experienced um, lieutenant and a licensed social worker, and they go out weekly to check on families who have come to our attention via, via an arrest report or an incident report, and they go and check up on these families at night, um, once a week, and they try and help the family, explain the program. They go in an unmarked cruiser. Um, the officer doesn't wear a uniform. He's dressed down. Um, the social worker and the police officer explain to the families what their role is, and really their role is to just help the family, stabilize them, um, so we don't have to go there again. It could be simply that somebody's off their medication, and uh, the clinician can help um, make some suggestions, perhaps talk to their physician um, about changing the medication, doing whatever is necessary to help with the family. And the great part about it is they're so good at this. This is what they've been doing for so many years. They keep going back to these families right. um, to go check up on them. Um, you know, and if they get told, listen, we don't want you here, they'll back away. But for the most part, I have to tell you, most families, most people who have family members who have a mental illness or a developmental um, uh, behavioral health issue um, really welcome that kind of support because there is very little support for, for families with mental illness out there. And there's plenty of people supporting family members alone, isolated. Uh, once they get in trouble, you know, seems like they have to walk down the criminal justice path we don't want them to come down our path. And, and it, it, it breeds other issues, too, sometimes homelessness. Correct. Uh, you know, years ago, all the mental health facilities were closed in the Commonwealth. They yep. went more to a community-based model, That's or correct. unfortunately, a lot of people ended up out in the streets. Yes. So this this uh, might be a stopgap to make to allowing that to happen. It is. It, it really is. And it, it, the, uh, the Department of Mental Health statewide is offering these grants um, to many, many communities, and a lot of police departments are adopting these models. And in Brockton, the other, uh, just to go back to the strategies, um, we have the co-response, and then we have um, the officers themselves that are that are that receive this 40 hours of training are allowed to go out um, either, usually after their shift, but during the day, yeah, or early evenings, and go out and check upon some of the people they've run into and they've had encounters with to go back and, and, and make that connection on a different level and let them know that they they are trained, they're there to help them. They, too, will go back and check up on those families. So, you know, I had a brother who was mentally ill. I can't tell you how much this fulfills my bucket list of what things I like in life. So right. I'm really proud of the work that the department does and really hopeful the state will continue to fund us. Okay, so we've scratched the surface. I just got the two-minute cue, but I gave okay. you a minute of that. So we got okay. one left, believe okay. it or not. So given this work in the past, have there been any feed, has there been any feedback about it from the community, stakeholders, or the elected officials? I, I know the councilors deal with the budget and the mayor deals with the budget. So I have uh, reached out to every city councilor um, via email and explained the whole program to them, and I have heard from a few of them. They've given me wonderful feedback. Um, all in support of, of this initiative. Um, sometimes silence is golden. It means just keep on going. I know that. I get that. Um, but I haven't had any negative response at all. I, you know, I think when people learn about it, they're actually really surprised. Your police department does something like this? Yeah, and we're pretty proud of it. If anyone has any questions for you, email, phone number? So email is mtbull, so that's M-T-H-I-B-E-A-U-L-T at Brockton Police, all one word, dot com. Mtebow at BrocktonPolice.com. And my telephone, my direct number is 508 897 5350. If you have any questions or thoughts or concerns, um, please call me. Uh, the grant is due right away, so <laughs> uh, I can always take the feedback. It's not the questions and the response is not tied to the, to, to, to the grant deadline. Thank you. We're going to follow up more with you at another time and see how it's going. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.